An Israeli artist, Alex Levin, Jewish in spirit, has come a long way to the topic that many masters do not dare touch in their creative life, and it can be understood. It would seem that everything has already been said about it. What can be more vivid than documents of that time? Pictures of people behind barbed wire, heaps of women's hair, rails leading to Auschwitz gates. But Alex ventured. Road to Hell. This painting is about faith and its limits. About the fact that faith and prayer, traditions that the Jews had been following for dozens of centuries, did not save them in the years of the world fire. A synagogue is collapsing. A menorah is ripped out of the sanctuary with its roots again. By looking at this painting, we understand how right is the comparison of a menorah with a tree. The tree of life from the Garden of Eden. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A family tree. Great sages look helpless. Their faces and the faces of their pupils, the faces of their wives and children, are already dead. It seemed to many people 70 years ago that the Jewish people and its culture did not exist and never would. The gates of hell open in the place which should be the apex of holiness, in the ark where the Torah scrolls are kept. Moses' table, a symbol of morals and world civilization, are about to collapse because all the bases of good and justice were disregarded. The Nazi are piercing the bodies of old men, women, and children with daggers, with swastika, which have the words, God is with us, inscribed in a Gothic script. So where is God? Which side is he on? Such a complicated question, and maybe even unsolvable for someone, the artist sets before those who are looking at his picture. Without providing a straight answer, Alex finds a place on his canvas for a small modern girl in a white and blue dress. Her dark curly hair cascade freely down her shoulders. She came from our present world, where there is a state with the same colored flag as the girl's dress. She is looking at people who died long ago, and we understand that this is a painting within a painting. The presence of this child on the canvas testifies that our enemies will never be able to defeat our people. They will not be able to do it, because not only we survived, but also we remember what happened and tell our children about it, even if it's hard for them to look at it. However, they need to know about the Holocaust so that it will not happen again. Stolen Childhood you can bring back everything, almost everything to be exact. Money, fame, glory, a beloved person. You can even restore your fading health. However, you cannot bring back time, especially if we're talking about childhood. The childhood of a Jewish kid was always special, even if he was brought up in a civilized European country. Each family kept cult objects pictures of grandfather rabbi, pious grandmothers in kerchiefs and caps. These people had seemed sweet but not modern, until the day when prophecies from their books, predictions of a collapse if the Jews finally leave their traditions, did not begin to come true. On the artist's canvas, the sky is turning to stone and falling apart, like a ceiling of a house that has just been hit by a bomb. The land the sweet land of cozy Europe is turning into stone and tearing apart under feet. A symbol of coziness, a baby cradle and toys are hanging over the abyss and it seems that a toy train departs for the gates with the inscription, Work sets you free, or bite macht frei, any minute now. And only a solid steady pile of books at the background of the painting suddenly brings back hope. Have all those books been read? Have all the predestinations from them been learnt? Because sages had warned about the catastrophe, had said that prosperity in the countries of exile could not last forever. Nobody had listened to them, although those who survived returned to the Jewish country and restored it. 
and there were still the same Jewish letters, this time on children's bricks, where the eternal Aleph, denoting the truth, Emmet, does not let us forget that the truth will always win. Flight from the Auschwitz The first Israeli astronaut, Ilan Ramon, a son of Jewish parents from Eastern Europe who had lived through Auschwitz, perished during a spaceship crash not far from the Earth. He took with him on his first, and as it turned out his last, space trip, a drawing by a boy from Terzin Ghetto, Theresienstadt. There was a space rocket in that picture. The space scale of the Auschwitz tragedy asks for a space response. It cannot be the other way, the author of the painting is telling us. A camp robe is flying up, and a large doll that has come alive appears before us in a wedding dress. A wedding is a symbol of life and procreation, but the painting is imbued with black colors of death and destruction. Phantasmagoria of ashes, space, and eternity overlap just like in real life. But the message of the painting is life, not death. Life, in which we should not forget still recent, according to the space scale, tragedy. The latter, into which the fingerboard of a musical instrument turns in the artist's canvas, is, by all means, Jacob's Ladder. He saw the angels of hostile people who were ascending and descending this ladder, but the last angel, the angel of Esau, the ancestor of the people of Europe, stayed on the top. Jacob was frightened and did not ascend this ladder. Do not fear, Jacob, the Lord said, and these words are addressed to us, to the Jews of the present age. We must not fear anything. This is our ladder to heaven. Unanswered Prayers A pomegranate fruit is a symbol of abundance and prosperity on a Jewish table on the New Year holiday, Rosh Hashanah. In the artist's painting, it turns into crematorium furnaces. This is a cruel truth which you cannot escape. Before being destroyed, the Jews were robbed, and the wealth taken from them was spent on improving the Nazi destruction machine. Jewish New Year is a judgment day. The Hitlerites preferred to conduct the most horrible campaigns at this time. Thus, the Jews in Kiev were killed on the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur. The Holocaust is not only death of millions of people, it's also a war of ideologies. Whose truth is more powerful? Why did not the tablets of testimony or the shofar save the Jews? Maybe they are not needed at all, since God does not respond to prayers. Still, something is looming in the distance, some tree hovering in the air. The tree is a symbol of life, a symbol of faith, and the Garden of Eden where is it flying? Where will it find soil for itself? Perhaps in the very country where already during the Holocaust the Jews were living on their own land, the land that they will be able to protect, protect their children, their families who live on it. And most likely, it's exactly a pomegranate tree that we see. A pomegranate is one of the five holy fruits of the land of Israel. Vanished World A composition of this painting requires at least a minimum knowledge of Jewish history. Nevertheless, even those who are not familiar with it at all will recognize the image of Moses created by the great master of the Renaissance. However, Alex depicted Moses with a yellow star of a ghetto prisoner. Perhaps it's a sentence to European civilization with which many civilized Jews had been in love for several centuries in a row. They had left ghettos for it. They had left their people and had used baptizing like Heinrich Heine in order to buy an entrance ticket to European culture. But in the middle of the most civilized century, this culture betrayed them, betrayed without protecting. Still, why did not great Moses protect himself and his people? 
Why did he allow them to drive himself and his brothers into ghettos and concentration camps? Why was not there its own Moses of the 20th century who would have led the Jews from European Egypt into the promised land when the right time had come? The cost of this double-edged failure, this double-edged defeat, was too high. Who will bring back to Sabbath tables festival lamps that suddenly started to look like gas chamber pipes? Who will bring back a musician to the violin and a child to his lost doll with the Star of David? Things outlive their owners. It seems that the artist wants to turn back time to destroy the rails leading into Auschwitz, which the Allies' aviation spared for some reason. And only the letters of the Jewish alphabet remain alive in this painting. Toy letters that were presented to children who came to a cheder. They were smeared with honey to make studying the Torah look sweeter for kids. These letters also passed into oblivion, but they returned later. They returned into the books of Israeli pupils. They are shining by the entrance to synagogues and in shop windows of fashionable stores. The words of Israeli anthem Hatikva, the hope, are woven from them, and they can still be used to put together the immortal words repeated by the Jews all over the world. Shema Yisrael, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and so it will be forever. Those who are looking at the artist's paintings can feel a rising question. Why bother the past, provoke hard reminiscences and negative emotions? The answer is simple. The Holocaust has not yet turned a page of history. There are heads of some countries who claim that there was no catastrophe of the Jewish people, at the same time saying that millions of Zionist occupants have no right to live. Jewish cemeteries and synagogues are desecrated all over the world, including those in Western countries. Hatred toward the Jews did not go away. And we need to remember every day what it can lead to. We need to remember it in the name of the dead, but even more in the name of the future of the living.